What's up guys, it's Name Cody here, and you guys all know what we're doing. Let's not dawdle, let's get right into analyzing this trailer. First shot is the same shot as always, I'm not even going to provide a comparison. There's our player character in what I've always assumed is the first landing site where we meet Ochi, and a Bulborb that we get to see in battle later. And then, boom, some real stuff in Aristocrab, first seen in Pikmin 3. It does have a slightly different design, and there's a baby in the back. Aww. So, does the design mean a different function? I don't know. There's a pull sprout and some crystals in the background as well. And what do the water spouts do? We see these all over and I'm not really sure. Then there's the Mamuda looking super fuzzy and I love it. The last time we saw him in Pikmin 2, the graphics were not good enough to show how fuzzy he truly was. But of course, he's a Pikmin 1 veteran in my heart. Then there's some puckering Buenos from Pikmin 3, a brand new pufferfish looking enemy. And is that the pearly clam clam from Pikmin 1 in the background? I hope it is, and as you'll see later, I think we're right. Also, this rock appears to be moving, so it's probably like a toady bloister or something, and I'm just blind. Next up, this beautiful elephant boy. He's a cutie with that little tail. There seems to be a theme with weird snout enemies in this game, which is amazing. There's a Greek flag towel in the background, some pots that were taken directly from my house by Miyamoto himself, some nectar eggs, and of course, a new dweevil color. Probably ice using context clues of everything we know. And I'm wondering, with all these dweevils around, where is the titan? Oh yeah, also, we're inside the house which is insane. Red Pikmin get shown off again, Ochi gets shown off again, and Colin is dead. The narrator says, your mission, should you choose to accept it? Which is odd because it's a game and accepting the mission probably should be required, but we'll see, I guess. Also, he says we are repairing the ship, but as we find out later, it's not with ship parts, but actually with the treasures we collect. Ochi is with the bench, sniffing out something denoted by this blue haze, which most likely means a castaway. And you will notice the pellet posy changes from blue to yellow, which means there's a chance we get blue Pikmin before yellows, which has never happened in a Pikmin game. Ever. And also, this stack of crystals keeps disappearing and reappearing. We get our first look at the HUD or UI of the game. Top left appears to be the time indicator, a massive change from the first three Pikmin games, and I'm not sure why they did it or how much I like it. You can see Ochi has a health bar just like the captain's, and later on, we see he can get hurt and presumably downed, just like the captain's as well. There's a clipboard teasing the return of winged Pikmin. There's some gardening tools up there. That strange onion object we keep seeing that could be any number of things, and of course, a bunch of stuff we've already seen before. We see the Pikmin take crystals back to the ship, just like gold from Pikmin 3 Mission Mode. A bunch of uninteresting stuff, or stuff I've covered in the previous trailers, is also here. We do find out in this trailer that this hole in the ground is like the geysers from Pikmin 2 in that it propels you up to this top section right here. But what is that object and why does it look like the blue onion from Pikmin's 1 and 2? It's not shimmering like the treasures do in this game, so what is it? You can see we already have the blue onion, so uh, what's the deal? There's some Ochi shots, while cute, don't reveal anything new except a good look at this onion object, which is still surprisingly vague and mysterious, unless somebody else figured out what it was and I just wasn't paying attention. Ochi then carries this little watch, which is actually from the first trailer we saw, of this game, and he has a strength of 3. This coincides with the growth and upgrade mechanics later revealed since we've seen him carry 10 before. And back inside the house, this is the stuff that I love, all completely new and fresh. There's a Wally Wall colored object here and something else on the other side of the table, but neither are moving nor shimmering. So maybe not enemies nor treasures, but you know, statues? I don't, I don't really know. There's also a sparkling claw treasure on the bar stool. There is some piece of treasure in the background, but it's hard to make out other than the yellow and red colors. A tomato is in the sink, not definitively sparkling, but we know from later that it actually is. So maybe all these strange non-shimmering objects are just treasures that we can't tell are shimmering. I, I, I don't know. Speaking of not being able to tell, is that an ice onion? Or maybe a frozen onion of some other kind? I honestly have no clue, but it's there, and I hope it is an ice onion, and that's what I'll probably put in the thumbnail. And there's a fan in the background that we learned flings our character and Pikmin through the air. Also, the burner is on. What the heck? Very irresponsible house owners. However, there's a button nearby that may be the key to turning it off. Or 
you know, possibly something completely different. I'm not sure. There's also a floating platform right here and over by the door. Is it just me or does that look like a circle of gems denoting a landing site, but yet no onion? Also, there's a Tupperware thing, which we learn later is in fact a treasure. We're now in the desert area we saw from the Pikmin 4 Japanese website. That's a cave entrance, a toady bloister, skeeter skates from Pikmin 3, and I'm gonna call that a new enemy right there, though a normal Wally Wog from the first two Pikmin games could be making its return. May maybe? Uh... There's also a hull, presumably for a hermit cromat, as seen in Pikmin's 2 and 3. The entirety of Easter Island is also there in the background, as well as a shimmering, what I'm gonna call a globe treasure. Uh, just a big sphere, basically. And of course, the burgeoning spider warts in the distance. Also the onions in the back. We learn Ochi can attack and can be hurt. And if you look in the back, there's a character we will cover later with his devil dog and a castaway. Also, crystals in this bush and the pumpkin with a clipboard obstacle that we may have to actually pull down to get to this pumpkin. Also, the onions in the back. And bingo, that's the SS Dolphin right there, face down as we see in the character customizer trailer. And this is a Game Boy Advance SP, which I own one of. My brother Greg used to play Finding Nemo on it all the time. Funny continuity thing, if this game takes place right after the original Pikmin, as we'll theorize later, this console uh, did not exist during Olimar's original adventure, which is just kind of funny that it's showing up now because it literally could not have in Pikmin 1. The Game Boy Advance SP is deposited into the ship, which gives it enough juice to find a new map location, just like the phones did in Pikmin 3 and the globes did in Pikmin 2. And oh my gosh, massive overview. I'll point out what I can, but even HD does not allow us to see what's going on fully here. First, the obvious. That is a stack of gold from Pikmin 3 Mission Mode, a pearly clam clam from Pikmin 1. That's actually a Statue of Liberty model treasure, I've come to realize thanks to your comments. There's a star fruit from Pikmin 3, there's a water spout, and a bunch of objects of interest that I don't even know what they are, so make sure you let me know your observations in the comments on this one. Next shot is similar of a different area, but thankfully lowered the ground. We see some stuff we've seen before, the Mamuda, baby Snagrits, and uh, a new golden sphinx treasure. Uh, I, I don't know, big statues are just in my mind right now. And then, yes, there he is, the armored cannon beetle from the original Pikmin. Great boss. The green dog is right here. Crystals all over the place. Another floating platform, another fan, a switch, which I'm assuming aims the fan in a different direction, a spider web off this lampshade, which we learned probably has a treasure dangling from it based on another shot. That's a red, yellow, blue combination safe. What's in there? And some jumping beetle things. And also a rather flat treasure, maybe a tablet, some rails from Fortnite's Mega City, and is this a new type of wall obstacle? Then here's the baseball from the Japanese website we talked about, and we jump into this cave and find out how great they look in this game. First cave is a bullboard fire temple place with some upgraded fire geysers rather than those pathetic stupid ones from previous games. There are also some iron bars and two unclear treasures. Second cave looks ripped straight out of Pikmin 3 mission mode with those conveyors and buttons. This looks themed along a construction site. There's also a 10 push box, some more fans, and a little bit of gold. From another shot, we see the air geysers working like I said they would in a toy skateboard treasure. And our third cave looks beautiful. Pikmin continues its huge scale issue with a massive Wally Wog and what looks incredibly like like an aquarium. I love the theming on this one. And there are some blue candy pop buds as well. We now carry all the grapes at once, weighing only 15, while all the individual grapes totaled to 20 in Pikmin 3. But that doesn't matter because Ochi teeters very close to killing everyone in his squad. And though I actually can't see them, white Pikmin are in the squad in what everyone assumes is obviously, it's obviously story mode. White Pikmin are back, yay. I don't know what this treasure can thing 
is, but we're pulling it off a spider web, leading me to believe this will be the case for the spider web we saw in the house too. There's also a million blowhogs in this cave and a stack of crystals, and that is an electric gate. Then there's a castaway, and we keep seeing these weird bubble shapes. So what are they? You know, crystallized raspberries? I don't understand. Also, he takes three Pikmin to carry, which is new for captains because Olimar weighed four Pikmin in the original, one Pikmin in Pikmin 2, and five Pikmin in Pikmin 3. So why can't they keep it consistent? Okay, before we look at this guy, burgeoning spider wart, and there is the blue onion separate from the big onion, but we have yellows, ice, and red. So is there another contradictory clue on what order we get the Pikmin types? What's going on here? And then there's the star of the show, this character only referred to as question mark, question mark, question mark, but it's Olimar, but as a Pikmin right? Same eyes, nose, and body, so maybe this does take place after the bad ending of Pikmin 1 in an alternate universe from Pikmin 2 and Pikmin 3. Super weird for such a dark tone to be taken with all this, you know, playful, happy time music, and also, where did Olimar get the dog that is also actually a Pikmin with the leaf tail? What are his motivations and why are we playing bingo battle in the main story? Also, this cave entrance is red, which probably means it's one of these goofy Dandor challenges and, and not a real cave. This whole thing versus question mark, question mark, question mark looks like a variation on bingo battle as stated, but your goal is to beat this Olimar figure in points, which are gained from collecting treasures, and then you can win the castaway back. Strange, um, very strange. But the name Dandori does not directly translate as far as I can tell, but it does maybe mean plan or arrangements. It's, uh, I feel like it's just like saying strategy game, maybe? or like strategy battle, something like that. Apparently, Miyamoto refers to Pikmin all the time with the word Dandori. Now, I can't fact check this, but the apparent translation to arrangement, I'm, I'm still pretty solid on, but grain of salt, of course. And, you know, does it really matter? And what do we see besides all the fruits from Pikmin 3 bingo battle? Strawberry, lime, tomato, actually a permazen. And we see an apple as well. We also see how terrible the Olimar AI is, and these should be super easy to beat. Also, there's a four minute timer and a very normal assortment of enemies. Last thing, Ochi's collar actually changes colors here to match the color of your onion rather than the red of Olimar's. Oh yeah, and that looks like an item slot for the power-ups you got with cherries in Pikmin 3 Bingo Battle. It's then called Trial Run, which could be the overall name for these Dandori battles or the name of specifically the first battle you have with this guy and then, you know, every battle you have with him has like a different name, you know, like a, a second fight. You know, something creative like that, I imagine. There is now a base camp for the Pikmin games, which feels like a hub, and there's a few options that characters give us here. Shepard, we know from her ID card, is a dog trainer who can upgrade Ochi. Talk to Colin to start the next day. This guy gives you suit enhancements, and what does our purple friend do in the back, and why is he purple? There's also other people just littered about who may or may not give you new game opportunities after you rescue them. Also, this window has just opened up to let the player character out because I'm guessing this is where you do your end of day report and all the stuff like that, as is with all Pikmin games. So all of these OG upgrades are pretty self-explanatory and predictable because I, I kind of, because I kind of predicted them in the last video. That's why they're predictable. There's increased carry capacity, increased attack strength, charge, swim, jump, dig, heal, which could be max health maybe, or actual passive healing, but that second option seems a little strange. And how do you get pup drive currency? You gotta like feed them or something, you know, what what is the skill point conversion here? Then we head to Glasses Dude for the suit upgrades and apparently an item modifier, an item purchaser or whatever. Maybe like a dodge whistle, pluck whistle, or you know, like a, like a spicy spray. I can't, can't really think of any items, you know? I don't know. But there's apparently a headlamp, which I don't think we've seen used. There's the anti-electrifier from Pikmin 2 and 3 for both the Captain and Ochi, as well as the Scorch Guard, and a new thermal defense upgrade protecting from the new ice hazard 
as well as faster shoes. And as you can see, the upgrade material is these crystals we've been collecting. Finally, we're getting answers instead of less questions, but I don't know that they're the answers I'm happy about, okay? It sh you should be using the crystals to build landing sites. That'd be so much cooler. Also, it was so much cooler to discover Olimar's little gifts in, in the snow instead of just, like, m making them. That's so lame. You don't even have to beat bosses to get upgrades anymore. What's the point? Christmas tree guy is named Yanni, and you talk to him to go on a night expedition. And yeah, we were 100% right in my extra details video. That is the SS Dolphin. We get a look at actual children bulborbs, I'm assuming, since they look like a mix of baby and adult bulborbs. Because if you didn't know, dwarf bulborbs are using advanced mimicry of bulborbs. They aren't actually part of the bulborb family. They are grub dogs, which is neat and scientific. Actually, uh, I think they're bread bugs. I think grub dogs is the bulborb family. Yes, they are bread bugs. This next section is all new stuff about the nighttime mode, but the narrator covers it all pretty well. That's a puffy blowhog though, and the new glow Pikmin can apparently do a big group move, which seems a little bit overpowered. I guess we'll see how this mode turns out, though it is very disappointing that only glow Pikmin can be used at night and they can't be used anywhere else in the game. That kind of sucks. Anyway, this is a nice camera angle. So is this, and hey, look, there's purple Pikmin. Oh, yeah, also another peckish aristocrab, and uh, there's a mound of sand right in front of him that appears to be moving. So perhaps it's like a, like a hidden enemy, like, you know, a flounder. That's a, that's a fish. The next shot has a music box treasure, and I swear Miyamoto literally raided my house. I have all these treasures. It's literally sitting on my dresser right now. But anyway, there's rocks and wings riding Ochi, and this is a completely different fan from the one Ochi jumped on in the last shot. Nice try, Nintendo. Also, you can't deny how similar this drawing is to the Rescue Corps ship. It just has four circles on it, that's why. There's some more collecting of star bits, a new scorpion boss, an ice-themed moth boss. This is actually a Pokemon. We see Pikmin getting frozen, which I guess has the effect of like a stun effect, like electricity had in Pikmin 3, or like getting crushed like the rock Pikmin do. You know, you just gotta, they'll get over it, I guess. And don't forget about these strange empty landing sites from my first Nintendo Direct analysis. Here's a tiny little baby crystal wall and a culmination of stuff that already been seen and confirmed for the game as well as the main character from ben stiller's night at the museum and then there's those things that only appeared on like three days in the wistful wilds and pikmin 2 that are poisonous and drop heaps of nectar and spray those are called uh ujadani close enough. So that's the whole trailer. Real quick observations, everyone has been saying how you can only have three types of Pikmin out at once, and this is true for every shot of gameplay we've seen, so that is very, very, very much a bummer. In incredible news, there is also a demo for the game coming out on June 28th, which should be spectacular, and there is now plenty of information on Nintendo's various websites and such that is accessible for all to see, and all of this is fairly self-explanatory so I will trust you all with it, you know, use it wisely. Now, I'm not saying that this is the end of the literally every detail series, but what I am saying is hopefully I can do a lot less analyzing and a lot more playing in the near future. But that is all for now, so thank you all so much for watching, and I can't wait to see you all in the next one.